So, I love My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I love its characters, I love its stories, well, depending on which story it is, and I love the world that it has created. So much so, it has been a major inspiration for my characters and series that I'm working on called Team Harmony. But that's a different story there. Now, before anyone asks, yes, I did see the Gen 5 My Little Pony movie, and I found it to be very enjoyable. That being said, it does have its issues, which I will talk about for another day. Still, this newfound life to the series can be all thanks to Lauren Faust. Faust will be head of the show for the first two seasons before leaving. Because of her departure, season 3 will go into a different direction, leaving many with mixed feelings with some good and some bad, with Lauren taking many of our ideas with her. So today I'm going to be talking about Faust's original plans for Friendship is Magic, but before I go into that, let me give you some background information on Miss Faust herself. Lauren Faust is an animator who originally got her start as a layout artist for MTV's The Max. She would then go to Warner Brothers where she would work on WB's late 90s animated films such as Cats Don't Dance, The Quest for Camelot, and The Iron Giant. But she also has helped her husband Craig McCracken on many of his projects, such as the original Powerpuff Girls, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Wander Over Yonder, and recently Kid Cosmic. Yes, while McCracken is the greatest of all time, Faust's contributions cannot be ignored to the point where they become the ultimate power couple in the animation industry. To quote Harley Quinn, Behind every successful man, there's a badass broad. In 2009, after the success of Michael Bay's Transformers movies, Hasbro wanted to revamp a lot of their old products and bring them for a new generation. And one of these would be My Little Pony. You see, during this time period, the franchise wasn't doing so well, being only used for straight to DVD releases where very young girls would watch them. Now, originally, Faust actually went to Hasbro to pitch her idea of the Galaxy Girls in order to make it into a toy line and animated series. But instead, Hasbro gave her My Little Pony. By the way, I really hope Faust has an opportunity to make this series one day because it seems like it has a lot of potential. Now, Faust was skeptical at first as she always had a love-hate relationship with the franchise. As a child, she would own the original My Little Pony toys from the 80s and would make her own stories with them, but hated the show for promoting gender stereotypes. So Faust thought if she was going to do this show, she was going to do it her way. So she would rework the characters and series, making them more relatable and breaking those gender stereotypes. So in October 2010, Friendship is Magic would appear and it became an instant success. Would it not just gaining the attention of its target demographic of young girls, but from people of different ages and sexes such as older males who would also watch the show. Despite the success, there was a lot of drama behind the scenes as Hasbro and Foss would butt heads with each other. After two seasons, Faust would leave and was replaced by showrunner Megan McCarthy, whose legacy was rather mixed. As she was the one who helped incorporate the humanized spin-off Equestria Girls and make Twilight Sparkle into an alicorn, thus causing a divide in the fandom. Faust would go back to working for Warner Brothers where she would develop the Super Best Friends of Forever, which would later evolve into the more well-known DC Superhero Girls. Which I must remind you was another franchise that started off as a bland marketing tool for young girls turned into a series that many people enjoy. Still, Faust's departure left many fans wondering what would have happened had Lauren Faust stayed on My Little Pony. Well that's a question I am not going to be answering. What? Now if you were expecting me to talk about a more badass scenario where it's more political, more epic adventures, Trixie was going to be the main villain, Celestia would die, and it would be this Lord of the Rings style battle, well I'm sorry to disappoint you but that is all false. Lauren Foss never said that any of that would happen if she stayed, and if she did, you think Hasbro would actually allow something that awesome to happen? I mean, yeah, if it was Transformers, most definitely, but this is still My Little Pony. It doesn't get that luxury. You see, this rumor was started by a random user on the MLP fan site called Derpy Brewer, which I recommend you don't check out. This has been parroted by users on DeviantArt and Reddit, which many claim were from a disgruntled writer or someone who worked on the show. Either way, I think it was part of a smear campaign against Megan McCarthy. As I stated before, some of the fans didn't really like the direction she took the show. Faust has been very secretive of what her future plans of the series could have been out of respect for the showrunners that came after her. Despite what some people say, Faust has nothing against the people who took over the show. Animation's a business, toys need to be sold, you may not like it, but people gotta work. It's a competitive and ruthless industry. 
So yeah, you can just throw that one right out the window. Also, are you really going to trust a source that has an anti-Semitic caricature of a Jewish person? No. Just no. No! None of that! Shame on you! So, for this video, I'm actually going to be talking about the plans that happened before this series even came out. What was different, what stayed the same, and the process that went through it. So, without further ado, and thank you all for your patience, let's get started. So to begin with, the original title was actually My Little Pony Adventures. But as many of you know, this title was eventually changed to Friendship is Magic. Couldn't find a reason why though. Next is the characters themselves. The main six were actually going to be the original ponies from the G1 series. But this was changed due to Hasbro losing the rights to these ponies with the exception of Applejack and instead they would take names from the G3 ponies. This is actually a lot more common than you think, just ask the Transformers community. Anyway, Pinkie Pie was originally supposed to be a Pegasus and Fluttershy was an Earth Pony, but these two would be switched in the final product. Rarity's element was actually going to be inspiration, not generosity. This was changed mainly because it was believed that kids wouldn't understand what Rarity's element meant, which I think is bullcrap, but whatever. And honestly, it makes more sense for Rarity's character as she is very creative, but generous, well, depends on the episode. Now, Twilight Sparkle's original name was actually going to be Twilight Twinkle. <laughs> Funny, right? With her having more blue hair and a moon cutie mark and was almost called Moon Dancer at one point. The funny thing is that later in the show's run, there would be a recolored Twilight Sparkle called Moon Dancer, though with more red hair, and they would even make that Twilight Twinkle joke. Twilight Twinkle Sparkle, whatever. Next, the Apple family was actually going to have a bigger role in this series. Applejack's older brother, Big Macintosh, was originally called Big Apple and was more playful, being wanted by female ponies and male ponies wanted to be him. Granny Smith was originally going to be more seen now and was actually the great grandmother of the Apples instead of the grandmother. Now for the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Apple Bloom was originally called Apple Seed, with Scootaloo being handicapped as it was an attention that she would not be able to fly, and Sweetie Belle was more or less the same. Now the twist for the Crusaders was that they were going to get their cutie marks, but it wouldn't be what they would expect. With Faust saying that they were learning their true calling is not what they wanted to be, it learned to accept that it was okay to do something different. And their teacher, Sarah Lee, was also going to have a bigger role. Now we come to my favorite part, Queen Celestia. And this is where the rift between Lauren Faust and Hasbro begins. You see, Faust wanted Celestia to be a queen, but Hasbro said no, claiming that queens were evil and that she should be a princess and actually wanted her to be pink. As you can imagine, Faust was infuriated as this was the same kind of gender stereotyping that she was trying to avoid. The two parties would go back and forth until they came to a compromise. Celestia would be a princess, but she cannot be pink. The messed up thing is that Hasbro would go behind Faust's back and make the original toy of Celestia pink, but this color scheme was corrected in later releases. Celestia was going to be more of an elusive figure, someone who would appear every once in a while to give wisdom. Nightmare Moon and Princess Luna were originally going to have different names. Princess Luna's original name was Princess Selena, which was a reference to the Greek goddess of the moon, Selene. But there was some legal trouble with the name, so they went with Luna, which means moon in Italian and Spanish. But it's also the Roman name for Selene, so it kind of works out there. Nightmare Moon was originally going to be called Discord, but as many of you know, that name was given to a different villain. Funny enough, in the European French dub, Nightmare Moon is called the Selene Mare, so you may have gotten the Selene apart depending on which version you watched. Trixie was originally going to be male and more of a rival for Twilight Sparkle. This seems like it was going to be the case with the latter during earlier seasons, but it was quickly dropped. Spike was going to have more of a connection with Princess Celestia as she was the one to race the dragon while Twilight was assigned to help him learn how to be one. Another character who was going to have a bigger role was Sakura, whose name was originally Shaman, but Hasbro's legal team said no, and I believe that was for the best. I don't know, I feel like there's some cultural insensitivity to calling the magical zebra shaman. So they chose an outdated word for zebra from the Oromo people of East Africa. Huh, I wonder what the new word is. They really should have kept it Sakura. 
Instead of rhyme, Sakura was supposed to speak in riddles and cryptic sayings, at first frustrating the cast, but eventually taking the time to learn what she was saying. And finally, we move on to the stories. The two types of stories they planned on having was the adventure and relation stories, and I think you can get an idea which one was which. The adventure stories were about, well, adventures, and relation stories were more slice of life. Stories such as Apple Buck Season, Dragon Shy, A Dog and Pony Show, Ticketmaster, and Griffin the Brush Off all managed to make it through, but there were some stories that didn't make the final cut. Such as Bring on the Thunder, where Rainbow Dash's arrogance and showboating almost gets Apple Bloom hurt. Another was Fancy Meeting You Deer, where the main six would meet a pony who was raised by deer. Now, the deer idea would come into play in later seasons, but for a more holiday-centric episode and rather different than the one it was planned. And finally, Nothing More to See, where the ponies actually discovered the Society of Sea Ponies. Again, another concept that will be used later on in the series. And that, my friends, was the original plans for My Little Pony. I know some of y'all wanted the uber awesome badass version of the series. But I found it very interesting how some stuff stayed the same and how stuff changed even when Lauren Foss was in charge. Now, would it make the series any different? Most likely not. Still, I hope you all learned something from this and actually realized how the interesting process of making a show goes. Not really much I can end on this one, just I just hope you all had a very good time watching this.